Follow me. First 40 days after Jesus' resurrection is a significant part of the story of the Bible, but sometimes we miss it because we immediately skip to Pentecost and Ascension. And we forget that Jesus did some of his most important teaching in those moments. And he lived out some of his teachings he gave before that. So today we're going to, look at, we're going to start looking at the first 40 days after Jesus' resurrection. Now, if this happened a couple of weeks ago, this would have been seven days, or no, yeah, seven days since Jesus' resurrection. So imagine it, seven days, and you witnessed, nine days ago, you witnessed a brutal killing of Jesus. You witnessed a terrible thing that happened in Jerusalem, and everybody was shocked was his, that, that followed him. And now you hear stories that he's resurrected. Some people say, we've seen him. Some people say, we've, we've talked to him. And, and, and we see that, that, that he says things that, that is really, really significant for our life and our walk with Jesus. Now, if you open your Bible, you go to John 14, um, you'll see very, very well-known text. text I, I know it off by heart, but I want to double-check if it's still there, because maybe. Um, John 14, verse 6 and 7. Let's hope I'm right. Am I right? Ooh, yes, six. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And it's fascinating that one of the first stories we read about Jesus after his resurrection is that he joined two guys on their way to Emmaus. So let's read that. Now the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that happened, and they talked and discussed these things with each other. Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. So here we see Jesus joining them on their way to this town of Emmaus. And, and many theologians, they, they will spend hours discussing this, that Jesus on the way, he's on the way discussing with them, and he's starting to have, to have a discussion with these guys, explaining to them what happened, because they literally ask him, where were you the past few days? Weren't you here when you, about Jesus? And they were telling him about this Jesus that were crucified, and now they hear stories, that, and he started explaining the scriptures to them. So something happened in that journey. And so the metaphor that, that Jesus says, I am the way, came to life in that moment. But it can be information or it can be something you live your life by. Is Jesus truly your way? Is he your only way? Most of the songs that we just sang, Jesus have it all. Everything is yours. It's all about Jesus. Is it true? Or is it just very nice songs? Because I love those songs. But do I sing them before I go to work, before I study, before I make life choices, before I choose her or him? Would you have recognized them on that road? It's one of the questions I, I would have asked myself. I wonder, how, how couldn't they recognize this is Jesus. The, 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 the words that they were kept from recognizing, but what kept them from recognizing him? Did he have some magic Star Wars power? You don't know who I am. We don't know who you are. <laughs> what happened there? Would you have recognized Jesus? If he would come in your life, on the way of your life, on your journey, would you recognize him if he started talking? to you. 
That brings me to a few metaphors. And we're going to look at a few metaphors that, 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 that people live by. One, if, one is that we are fertile soil. And you can plant good seeds in the soil. It's the one the Bible uses as well. So listen here, the seeds were sown and some of them fell on good ground, came up and some of them fell on the road, some of them. And, and it's an amazing story that you must go read because it, it tells you what, what, what confuses us, how we lose, how we lose God word, God's word. So, um, so we say I'm fertile ground. And, and then, but the, another thing happens there, there is no supervision. So while we are fertile ground, a bunch of metaphors and stories get dumped in your life. And you start living your life according to those metaphors. And it's shaping the story of your life. Someone would say when you're 16 years old, listen here, you need to marry this and this. And, you're, and you, I'm, gonna, I'm looking for this and this. But you never considered taking that to Jesus. <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't want to marry that and that. Uh-uh. Or, I need to become this to become someone in life. Or, listen here, to really have a life of meaning, you have to. And those stories were dumped along the line in your fertile ground. And it started coming up, this beautiful plant, and no supervision. And you never tested it with your community. You never tested it with Jesus. And if he looks at it, that's a disaster. And just think, what has been dumped in your character over time. Just think about it. It's difficult to think about it because we, sometimes we don't even recognize those stories in our life because it's such a big part of it. It's our philosophy. That's just how things work. The moment you realize how many, how, how many stories you have is that when you get married and the other person in your, in your marriage hasn't got the same story. So, so just one, Christmas. On Christmas Day, we open presents 6 o'clock in the morning. Suzelle, Christmas Eve. What a great, great. But now, although I hate it. I know, the evening, Christmas Eve, the 24th. That's what it means, Christmas Eve. So, so the 24th. So the, although I hated it as a child, I wanted to enforce that in our marriage. No, we open at 6 o'clock on the 20th. No way we open it Christmas Eve. So that's the easy one she won. But... Imagine how many other stories you have like that. It's your script. It comes with you. No. One of my friends, he married a, a girl, and he, um, he, had a, he had a few movies, movies like Snatch and, uh, and Fight Club and those, those things that mostly only guys like. But he watched one every morning. That's his thing. He will wake up at five, watch a movie, and go to work. And he, he tried, and all the, most of the guys said, yeah, what a boy. Yes, what a guy. But what happened? He got married, and his wife said, Aurelia is her name. No, no, no. We're going to have breakfast. No, no, no. I'm going to watch the movie. You must watch with me. I'm not going to watch those stupid films with you. He knew all of them off by heart, but it had to change. It had to change. So those stories dumped in your character. Some of them good, but some of them could be really, really bad and shape the path of your life for many, many years. Another philosophy is you have arrived. We're given the sense that you have arrived when you. And, 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 and it's not just when the GPS says, you've arrived. I love it when the GPS says, yes, thank you. How did you know? <laughs> but what is those stories that you're telling yourself? Then if I have that, if I... If I can display this, if I finally have that degree, finally um, present the, myself as this, finally reach that weight, um, whatever, I would have arrived. And Jesus, that I am the way to the arrival. But more important in arriving is how you get there. Because sometimes we get there in many twisted ways. And when you get there, it wasn't the thing you were seeking in the first place because you left. Is that all? Wow. I thought when I got, I would, no. There will always be a newer, better, richer, sexier. You, you will arrive for one minute and then the next guy will arrive. <laughs> next one is, I share, therefore I am. Um, Jesus didn't share anything online. 
Wow. I know some of you, that's a shock. It's impossible. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm sure he said when he walked on the water, testing the waters or whatever. So, uh, when he walked on the water and the disciples were scared, look, they think I'm a ghost. So, uh, I share, therefore I am. And I've I seen it at a table on this day. Someone at the table took the phone. I just want to see if I've, got, if I've had any more likes since last night. So posted something, and I want to see how many. And, and if you don't get any likes, it's, it's a terrible thing. But it's very important because we start to live our life according to the possibility of getting likes. I had a friend, and this is years ago when we just had Facebook, before the others. He had a program design because he lived in Hong Kong, but he had lots of friends in Africa and Switzerland and the United States. And the, the program worked out at what exact time he should post to get the highest influence of all his friends. And um, now the, uh, the stuff does it automatically. But imagine that, those days. So he lived his life according to how many likes. And if you don't get likes, but maybe you just posted at a bad time. Or maybe something else happened. Or maybe someone sexier posted something sexier. Oh, it's like you want to bring out your song and you release it and Beyonce drops a new song. Oh, <laughs> it's gone. Nobody heard your song. It's over forever. You've lost that moment in time. Is this a big part of your life? How important is this? The, moment you, the way you can test that is to delete all social media from your phone for a, a day. A week? A year? Imagine, I see some of you are laughing, I'm like, you're crazy. <laughs> I'm never going to do that. It's impossible. <laughs> how will people know I exist? <laughs> you start hyperventilating. But how important is that in your life? And it's, I don't say, I'm not saying social media is bad. I'm saying if it's determining the path of your life, then there's a problem. It's a real, real problem. And it's to bring it to Jesus. Lord, why am I doing this? Is this okay? Yes. Then, most of us can afford this type of air travel, if you're lucky. But this, the airlines say they've got a big problem because people buy these tickets, but they expect this. Private. You, if, you've, if you've had any friends, John Simons, the leader of Dr. Davis, Brother-in-law works for Virgin Airlines, so he gives him free first-class Virgin Airlines international tickets. So many times per year, you will climb on the airplane, they will give you pajamas you can wear the entire flight. You'll have your own little bathroom. They will set up a table. It's, you can eat your lunch at dinner, your breakfast, anytime. You can have anything. It's the wine list is like you can't pronounce one word. It's the next, next, next level. But we, we, you pay for the cheapest seat, and then you're very upset when there's no place for your suitcase. And this is the metaphor, entitlement. And we see it. It's my road. It's my world. It's my life. And even some of these songs, while singing now, because I've got this sermon in my head. He said, all my days, all my life, have it all. That could even have a sense of entitlement in it. We should actually sing all your days, all your life, because it's everything is yours. But it won't make sense that we sing all my days and all my life. But all we'll have to explain every time before we sing it. But is this a story in your life? Have you ever had a sense? Because someone will tell you, oh, you're so entitled. But have you, have you gone and said, am I maybe entitled here? Do you walk into a room and you're upset when you don't get the seat you want? Do you get on a plane and hope for, because I want to fly like that, just once. I want to get on a plane, sorry sir, we messed up your booking, you'll have to go to first class. Uh, I want to say, ah, okay, we have no pajamas. <laughs> we want to fly like that. But if you expect that every time, you expect that every time, you have a problem. Another metaphor, especially in South Africa, is we just evade conflict. You will know where all the potholes are in your street, and you'll just drive past them. You won't do anything about them. 
That's what we do. We see, and, and Suzelle challenged me this last week, they, 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 they've come to a place of complacency at their company, and they said, but let's challenge these things. Let's challenge it. And, and they said, just look, at, just look at how some people drive. Like yesterday, one guy came up in a, uh, one way. Everybody just leaves it. He's just going there. <laughs> like her. She tells me, just hoot at him. <clears throat> and I hoot at him, and he looks like, what? So, so just say, listen here, yeah, stop it. Because there's one thing that Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things will be given to you. Now, the word righteousness there can also be translated as his justice, his, his way of doing things. So sometimes as a Christian, we have to say, enough. This cannot be like this. This cannot happen in our school. This cannot happen at our work. Listen here, yeah, let's do something about this pothole. There's a guy that did it in Pretoria. He figured out it will cost 80 rand to fix a pothole. So he got a team together. They buy the stuff at builders, and they just fix the potholes themselves. It doesn't last forever, and that's why you have this pothole patrol in Joburg. It's amazing. And everybody loves discovery. It's cost them 80 bucks a hole. It doesn't matter. But thank you for painting the road. Um, but are you an evader of conflict? Or will you say, this is not right? This is not right. The Lord knows we need to do something about this. And most of the times, if you feel that, that is a holy discontent placed in you by God himself. And we need to do something about it. Violence against women in our country is not right. It's not right that the political leader last week said, listen here, don't wait for Jesus, I am your Jesus. We should say, no way can you say that. How dare you say that? His posters is everywhere, and I thought, wow. My wife called him the Antichrist, because that is an Antichrist statement. This is a different one. I have arrived versus you have arrived. So sometimes you get the sense that people will say, you have arrived, but then you start thinking, I have arrived. And we do that with Christianity. The moment we give our hearts to the Lord, I have arrived. But that's only the beginning of your journey with Christ. It's not, and, and, and Paul even says that. He uses a different one. He says, he used this one. I don't like it because it sounds heavy. I say, run the race. Now, I don't know if you've ever run further than five kilometers. Even, anybody further than five? 21? Yeah, yeah. You, once I tried doing it without training. Oh, I did it last year. I can do it again. The photo, the, those days they still took pictures and you can buy the picture. The, it was the Two Oceans Half Marathon. So the last seven kilometers is from Kirsten Bulls all the way up to UCT is one big, long uphill. The picture, they take, they take the picture of you just as you go through the dip. You can see in that picture, I'm almost dead. I literally, you can, in that picture I saw the little angels coming, they're closer. It's now time. And you have to train for that thing. Paul even says, he says, do you know that, it is, that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. Okay, so it hasn't changed for years. Now, he's talking about the Olympic Games. He's talking about serious running. It's a, it's a marathon, 42 kilometers. So, but you have to do training. You're very, very lucky if you can get away with light training. You have to wake up early. They do it to get the crown that will not last. So he's talking about this, those, that, that plant thing they put around their head. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, do not run like someone running aimlessly. You can see when, some, some, when, you, when you jog and you're a runner, you can see when someone's running aimlessly. It's like... I don't know what that guy's doing, but at least he's trying. All right. And do not fight like a boxer beating in the air. If you're going up against Mike Tyson, you better have your stuff together and your ears covered, if you have known that history. Uh, <laughs> you, you better train. You have to have a few punches in a punching bag. And this is what he's saying. He's using sport metaphors. Listen, yet this is how you live. And, and, it, and it links a, along with the way. Run this race. Complete this thing. Do this thing. Where are you running to? Your current life. Oh, oh, let's look at it this way. What is your current trajectory? Where is it taking you? If you go on doing the things that you're doing now, the decisions you make every morning when you wake up, 
um, the things you click on, the things you scroll through, if that continues along this, where, what is your flight path? Where will you end up? It's, you're determining a way of life. Because if you want to change your life, you ask, what did you do this year? No, no, you ask what you did in this month. No, no, you, you, you ask what you did this week, this day, all the hours of the day, and you can boil it down to one minute. Every minute counts, and it sends you in a certain direction. And is Jesus in any way involved in that? Is he there? John 14, what I read now. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we didn't know where you are going. So how can you say we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So what he basically said is, you know the way because you know me. So the most important thing in your life, because we will never know where we're going. If, if the Lord gives us all, our, all the plans laid out, to listen, you're going to marry this person, you're going to travel here, and at this age you're going to do that, you're going to start organizing your own plans to get to that. And he's brilliant with that. Don't interf- you don't need to interfere with that. You can just ask, Lord, I know you, and I know you know the way, so you are the way, I want to follow you. As they approached the village, it's now the end of that story, to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. Father, this, this is crazy. Jesus deliberately, okay, guys, ciao. I'm, no, no, he did that on purpose. What if he does that to us? He, 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 he's sending you in that direction, and then he says, okay, guys, ciao. And I'm, could it be that he will work that way with us as well? But they urged him strongly, stay with us. For it's nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. Wow. I would have loved to see that. Someone's still handing your bread in, and boom. (laughs) Yeah, I, really saw, I saw that. Wow. This is Jesus at his coolest. <laughs> Disappearing, walking through doors, this 40 days. So we see things like this. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while, we to- while he talked with us on the road and he opened the scriptures to us? That's the thing about... Is there a burning in your heart? Is there a morning you wake up and you, and you say, Lord, I want to, the first thing I want to do today is not social media or my own story. I want to open your word and I want to allow you to do that in my life. Imagine that. Imagine that. That's the first thing. Then after you, you can do all those other things, but then this thing shapes the way of your life. Because he's the way. He wants to be your way. I am the way. And if he is the way, are you prepared to follow him? Romans 6 verse 5 says, For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. That's the journey. He said, if you want to follow me, you have to die. You have to give up. You have to surrender. That's most of what we sang in the songs now. So I want to invite Jock and Lisa Marie uh, forward. I don't have... um, I hope Jock told you. <laughs> yeah. So we, um, I just sensed we have to, Jesus have it all. We're going to do just that chorus to say, Lord, but I want you to be the way in my life. And um, <clears throat> let's look at this, all these metaphors again. Because one of them could be the one determining your mm-hmm. way, and it shouldn't be the one. The seeds and good soil... Great stories, great philosophies of very smart guys. It's not the way you should walk. Or, I will arrive when I have. Or, I share, therefore, I am. 
or I'm entitled to this. Jesus didn't have any entitlement. In fact, he said, if you go to a party, take the least important seat in the house, then someone will come and say, listen here, please come and sit here at the head of the table. But if you do the other way around, he said, they will say, sorry, this was reserved for someone else. And you would go sit with the servants. That's a story Jesus told. And are we prepared to do this? No, no, no. Give me first class, Jesus. Clink. <laughs> do I avoid, avoid conflict? You know God is talking to you about something. And I'm not going to do something about it. Or I think because I gave my life to Jesus, now I've arrived. No, no, it's only the beginning. Run the good race. Fight the good fight. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the way. Am I your way? He wants to be your way. I invite you, let's stand. We're just going to sing this chorus. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. And really give everything to him. If there's anything that, that popped up in your heart now, something you sense, Lord, I really I need to change this. Give it to him. Because it's all about him. It's all about him. Lord, we thank you that it's really all about you. It's not about us. It's all about you. Thank you that we can die with you and be resurrected with you. Lord, and you are the way. You are our way. You are our Lord. You are our Savior. You are the King of my life. You are the King of our lives. You are the King of this kingdom. Lord, and we want to see your kingdom come. Like you proclaimed, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. It's a year. Lord, we pray for your kingdom. And we pray that our lives will align with your way. That we will follow you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Proverbs 1 verse 7 in the NIV. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. I wonder if you listen to that statement. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Now fear, the word here is not fear. It's, it's have to have respect for, to be, a, to be in awe of this unbelievable God who loves us and gives us everything we need. And he gave us everything we need to have a life. Now, if I tell you, where do you get your knowledge? What's your first answer? Would it be chat GPT? I do Wikipedia. Or I Google it or my studies. Or is it I turn to the Lord because the knowledge I get from him is the most important knowledge I need for life and living. I want to invite you to, to sit with your hands open 
like this, if it's possible, and to say, Lord, I'm open to get my knowledge firstly from you. Lord, thank you that um, you are everything. Lord, you know everything. You hold our lives in your hands. Lord, and you know our futures, and you can see it as plain as day. Lord, I ask that we, will, we will, must come to you and turn to you and say, Lord, let, let us get our knowledge from you. Not from books, not from the internet, but first from you. As James write, Lord, that those who seek wisdom, they will get it. Lord, we come to you and we ask for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Proverbs 1 verse 7 in the NIV. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fool... Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I hope everyone is doing amazing. And we saw a few new faces tonight. So if it's your first time here, um, I want to say welcome. And we want to invite you to join our mission. So afterwards, we're going to be there at the back at one of the TVs. Please come and say hi. And then something that we really love building here at Doxadeo is obviously community. And one of my favorite things is small group. And that happens on a Wednesday. So we really want to connect you with a group of amazing people. And we also have this amazing new wall, community wall. So please come and have a look and then you yeah, chat to us so that we can connect you and help you find your people. And then we want to pray with you. So afterwards, the band is going to be here at the front. If you need prayer for anything, please come to us. And then lastly, we have amazing coffee there at the back. So please, let's just kick off the week together. And yeah, have a good evening. Thanks, guys.